Our lives are ordered by secret internal pacemakers in our bodies. They determine when we sleep or wake up, influence the amount of strength we have, and dictate the best time for us to have brain waves or fall in love. These body clocks are as old as mankind, but we have only begun to learn to read them during the last few decades. Cosmic cycles have left their mark on all life on Earth. The interplay of sun and moon, the change of the seasons, overlapped with the appearance of particular species of plants and animals. These cycles were reflected in the internal rhythms which helped all forms of life survive. Every species developed a different type of inner rhythm during the course of evolution, which helped it adapt to its biosphere. Our bodies follow a definite schedule. Our main clock heats up our bodies early in the morning. At the same time, certain stress hormones are released. These prepare us for the coming day. Our mental powers reach their high point between 10 and 12 o'clock, but the danger of suffering a heart attack is also especially great at this time. Our blood clots more easily and the heart's arteries are less flexible. This means our heart receives less blood. If we pay attention to our body clock, we can perform to the best of our ability. Top athletes often break records late in the afternoon because their body temperature and muscles reach their highest point then. Our liver is in top form for two hours beginning at seven in the evening, which is why we can stomach alcohol best during this time. Our organism is focused on sleep after 11 at night, and we are at our most unproductive at about three in the morning. Our bodies are subject to individual rhythms as well as this general schedule. Our genetic makeup is responsible for this. It dictates, for example, whether a person will be an early or late riser in the morning. The body temperature of those who hate getting up in the morning rises more slowly. That's why they sleep longer and find it hard to get out of bed. Despite their differences, the light which falls on the retina in their eyes is the body's alarm clock. Information about the light is passed to the brain as impulses via the optical nerve. Their target is a tiny nucleus, a bundle of neurons consisting of about 8,000 nerve cells. This is where what is probably the most important human metronome ticks away. What is known as the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCN. It orders the neighboring pineal gland to stop producing the sleep hormone melatonin. Then, production of other hormonal agents is stimulated. These processes signal to all the other cells and organs that a new day is beginning. Anyone who has suffered from jet lag knows how sensitive our body clock can be when it's upset. We may leap over several time zones in a jet, but our body clock stays largely at home. We feel listless for days, tired or hungry at the wrong times, and have stomach upsets and lapses in concentration. Light gets us into a new rhythm, but our most important body clock needs time to readjust the hormonal signals to local time. This may take up to two weeks, depending on the number of time zones which have been crossed the direction of the flight, and personal idiosyncrasies. The way our body clock and rhythmical cycles affect our bodies is what chronobiologists study. Scientists have evidence that the effect of more than 150 medicines depends on the time of day when they are taken. A sleeping tablet given to some animals at midday killed nearly all of them. But when it was given in the evening, they all survived the same treatment without any problems. The Paris tumor specialist, Francis Levy, has shown how important this knowledge is for human beings. He has coordinated his patients' chemotherapy with their body clocks. Normally, the medicine is administered three times a day, or at some time during the course of the day. But if you examine how cells work very closely, you realize that cell division and our metabolism are subject to a 24-hour rhythm. 
If you pay attention to these rhythms when giving cancer patients their medicine, you notice that side effects and efficiency can be increased or reduced depending on the time of day. By using the patient's natural rhythms to determine when strong cell poisons are administered, Francis Levy has been able to achieve staggering success rates in treating intestinal cancer. This exact timing is made possible because patients wear infusion pumps on their bodies all the time. These pumps can be individually programmed and contain the two or three medicines which a tiny portable computer injects at the best possible moment. This means the patient gets the right medicine at exactly the right time and can still move about freely despite the treatment. Chronotherapy is geared towards our 24-hour rhythms and successfully reduces the damaging side effects of medicines on, say, the peripheral nervous system. In comparison with traditional chemotherapy, the side effects occur about five times less often. This enables us to give higher doses of the medicines and so achieve greater effects. This means we have been able to almost double our success rate in comparison with traditional chemotherapy. Information attained in the laboratory is already being applied in everyday life. As we become more adept at living with our natural body rhythms, we are in a better position to remain healthy and we can increase our understanding of how we tick.